Hi, this is Eric Lyons, and this is a tutorial on how to use SynFind in Koji for identifying uh, syntenic regions across multiple genomes. So although SynFind is, is listed in the entrance tools of Koji, we're going to approach this tool from a slightly different avenue. Um, first, we're going to start off with Organism View and search for a genome of interest. So I'm going to search for uh, infestans, and specifically one of the strains of phy Phytophthora uh, infestans. And when I identify um, the genome of interest, in this case it's going to be strain T30-4, I'm going to launch Koji's genome browser. And what this will do is just let me cruise across a genome, and what I want to do is I just want to pick a gene. SynFind operates on a gene in order to find all syntenic regions um, around that particular gene and other genomes. But at the same time, the output uh, is generated in such a way that it'll generate a, a full syntenic gene list for all the genes in that particular organism. So all we want to do is just pick any gene within the genome uh, that, that we can use to sort of anchor our analysis. So I'm going to pick this one. And when you click on one of these genes, you'll get Koji's gene annotation box, and there'll be a link in there to SynFind. So when SynFind loads, it will have that particular gene selected down here along with this taxonomic description. If we click on the genera for that organism, it will automatically populate that term in the organism description search box and identify all the organisms in Koji uh, whose taxonomic description matches it. So this will allow us to find related organisms. So here's one, um, Capsiki. I'm going to go ahead and add that to our search. Uh, here's Infestens. I'm going to skip that one. Um, here's the original strain that we identified. I'm going to pick um, Remorum, and I'm going to pick one of these um, uh, Sohays or Sojays um, for analysis. Uh, this particular program requires genomes that have protein coding sequence or CDS annotations, and you can see here's a, a, a genome which doesn't have those, and it gives you a message that says this cannot be used. And once we've selected our genomes um, to search against, all we need to do is run SynFind. So in this case, the results came back really quickly, and that's because uh, these large whole genome analyses had already been done and all the results cached. And at the top, what we have is uh, all the syntenic regions to our particular query gene. So our query gene was I, uh, PITG00253, and it is syntenic to a region in Kepsiki. We did not find an actual gene at that position that's syntenic to it, so instead we get a proxy for that region. So we found the region, but not necessarily the gene. The gene's no longer present there. But we did find syntenic genes, syntologs, in Remorum and Sojei. And then what we end up with are a bunch of links and some results. So these um, results down here are called syntenic depth tables. This is useful if you're trying to uh, understand the polyploidy history um, relationship between genomes. If you want more information about syntenic depth, just click on the link and it'll bring you over to uh, the help page for SynFind that describes the syntenic depth, as well as examples of, of what these syntenic depths look like. Um, you can generate dot plots between any two of these genomes if you want to by just clicking the dot plot link. And um, I'll let that one run. I think some of these might have already been done ahead of time. So this one, this one has been done uh, just in terms of a lot of the background analyses. And when the results come back, um, our particular gene of interest gets highlighted with a little red dot. So these are all the syntenic regions um, identified through SynMap. And one of the things that's nice is that there's this link here that says um, regenerate the analysis. So if you use this link, you can reconfigure this analysis with the same search genomes as well as your original uh, gene um, that you're using for your query. And you also have the opportunity to generate the master gene set table. So if you click this, um, and this will start downloading in the background, this will be a large tab delimited table that identifies all the syntenic uh, regions uh, across all these genomes for every single gene within the query genome. Um, and that will take um, a little while for it to download. It has to go through, assemble all the data, and now it's going through the process of, of downloading. So while that's downloading, um, I'm going to go ahead and just take a quick peek into that file so you can get a feeling for, for what it looks like. Um, so this will be a text file. You can open it up in, in any of your standard uh, spreadsheet programs like Excel or, or um, Numbers by Mac. And here's my file in the process of being downloaded. And you can see it's a gigantic large tab limited table. Um, it's going to be a little difficult to visualize, but if we were to stretch it out, what you'll see is 
the first column is the syntenic relationship. So here we found a series of, of regions that are syntenic. Here's our query gene. This next thing tells us if we found genes or um, proxies and the chromosomes that they're contained in. Then at the very end is a link to GIVO that we could use if we wanted to analyze this region in more detail. So I'm just going to take that link um, and copy it into the search bar. And this will automatically start running GIVO with these regions um, preloaded. And um, that didn't turn out to be a very helpful example. So um, I'm going to just scroll down to the list and, and I'll pick another one. Um, see if that one comes up with something that's a little bit more interesting. So, so now this, this other link is, is running. So if you had a particular gene of interest in here, say for example um, this gene that I just randomly selected, you can always do a search for it in order to then find uh, all the other syntenic uh, genes to it across these other genomes. So here's a nice case. Here's our query region at the top. Here are these additional regions from these other genomes. These blocks represent regions of sequence similarity. And what we can see is that we have a high degree of conservation as we look across all these regions. And what's fun is you can identify that there has been an, uh, an inversion that's happened in one of them um, right here at the very end of, of this guy. So here's a, a probably unique evolutionary event that happened on that one. So uh, I hope this has been useful. Uh, feel free to contact the Koji team if you have any questions. And um, let us know if you have any comments or feedbacks in order to improve this tool. Thank you.